Hello and welcome to this lesson on the Young's Double Slit Experiment, which is part of the WAVES topic for AQA A-Level Physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at explaining the process of interference for light waves. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can describe the process of superposition, understand the derivation of the Young's Double Slit Experiment, and calculate values based on the Young's Double Slit Experiment. So in today's lesson, we'll be looking at the following part of the AQA A-Level Physics Specification 3.3.2.1 Interference, which is part of the WAVES topic. So to see two source interference with light, you can either use two coherent light sources or you can shine a laser through two slits, so as shown in this particular diagram. Now a laser is a source of monochromatic coherent light. Now you can create two coherent sources by shining a single laser through a card containing two slits as shown in this particular in this picture and in this diagram. Now as you can see in this diagram, as the light wave passes through the slit the light diffracts. Now to ensure diffraction takes place the wavelength of the laser has to be similar in size to the gap of the slit. So what happens is as these two um, as these two waves diffract through the gaps, okay, they'll interfere in creating pattern of constructive and destructive interference on the screen, which is shown as bright and dark fringes, which you can see in the following photograph. So you get areas of brightness, which are bright fringes, and areas of complete darkness, which are dark fringes. Now, this experiment is referred to as Young's double slit experiment because Thomas Young was the first person to carry out this experiment. However, he used white white light instead of a laser. Now what you can do is you can look at the pattern formed on the screen and you can determine the path difference and the phase difference between the sources in the interference pattern in each part of the screen. So you can see with a light or bright fringe that you can see constructive interference takes place so therefore our path difference is either going to be zero or a um, multiple of the wavelength okay so you can see it would be at zero at one wavelength two wavelength three wavelength etc whilst the destructive interference forms the dark fringes and that happens where the path difference is going to be um half a wavelength or a multiple of half a wavelength so you can get half a wavelength path difference for a dark fringe one and a half uh wavelengths for a path difference for another dark fringe, a two and a half uh, wavelength path, path difference for another dark fringe like that. Now the experiment as we mentioned can be carried out with a laser or a white light source like Thomas Young used originally. So you can see here you've got your pattern form with a laser and a pattern form via white light. Now you'll notice that when a white light source is used the pattern formed is less intense and you have a wider maxima than if laser light was used and in addition to that when a white light source is used the pattern produced on the screen will contain different colors with a central white fringe as shown in the diagram on the right as white light is made up of many different frequency waves so it's not monochromatic like laser light is now Young's double slit experiment was very important because it provided the evidence that light could act as waves it showed that light could both diffract and interfere it the light source to fracks through the gap and then they interfere with each other to produce the interference pattern on the screen and these are both wave mechanisms so this backed up the theory of Huygens who said that light was a wave now this was important at the time because this contradicted the theory proposed by Isaac Newton that suggests that light was made out of particles which Newton himself called corpuscles so this leads to Young's double slit experiment being one of the most important in the history of science as, the, as was the first experiment experimental proof that light was acting as a wave and not as a particle. Now you can derive an equation regarding this experiment by considering the following setup. Now please note in this particular diagram S is the distance between the two slits from center to center. W is the separation between two adjacent bright, bright fringes or two adjacent dark fringes and D is the distance between the slit and the screen. Now what we're going to consider is we're going to consider the two waves meeting and interfering, and interfering at a point P where P is the first bright fringe on the screen. 
Now, if we consider the purple diagram, which is shown in this particular diagram, we can say that sine theta, where theta is, is clearly labeled on the diagram, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, a little bit of trigonometry. Now, the opposite in this situation is the path difference, and the hypotenuse in this, this situation is the slit separation itself. So what we can therefore say is that sine theta is equal to lambda because the path difference between the two sources has to be lambda because it's the first bright fringe. So therefore the path difference between the first bright fringe is one wavelength or one lambda divided by S, the slit separation. Now because the angle here is going to be very, very small, we can use something called the small angle approximation to say that sine theta equals theta. So therefore we can say that theta is equal to lambda over S. S. Now we can do the same, but we can now consider the yellow triangle. Now we can consider the yellow triangle, which is marked with the theta, which is the same theta as in the previous triangle. It's just been, you know, because we can use similar triangles, to see it's actually the same angle. We can say that tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, where in this case the opposite is the fringe spacing, the distance between uh, the two bright fringes, divided by the distance from the slit to screen. So we can say that it equals to double over d. Now as previously we can say that because theta is very small in this situation we can use the small angle approximation to say that tan theta is equal to theta. So we can say that theta is equal to w over d. Now we can combine these two equations because they both equal theta. So we can say that w over d is equal to lambda over s and we can rearrange it to form our equation which is w is equal to lambda d over s. So we can can calculate values from the Young's double slit experiment by using the following equation W is equal to lambda D divided by S where W is the fringe spacing the distance between two adjacent bright fringes or two adjacent dark fringes in meters lambda is the wavelength of the wave source in meters D is the distance between the slit to the screen in meters, that should be a perpendicular distance, and S is the distance between two between the two slits in the Young's double slit experiment, and it's measured from center to center and in our units of meters. So what have we looked at in this particular lesson? We've looked at the idea of the Young's double slit experiment, the use of two coherent sources or the use of a single source with double slits to produce an interference pattern. We can work out our value for the fringe spacing by using the equation W is equal to lambda D over S and we understand the production of what the interference pattern would look like if we use white light. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the process of superposition, understand the derivation of the Young's double slit experiment, and finally calculate values based on the Young's double slit experiment. So thank you for watching this particular video on the Young's double slit experiment, which is part of the WAVES topic for AQA level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.